The student contacted me with a question about this problem from section 11.5. This is number 10, and what it is is it's a very foundational um, expected value problem. I call it foundational because it it's the kind of core one. They all look somewhat like this. And so let's go through and answer the questions. Hopefully you know that expected value is nothing more than the outcome times its associated probability, right? So we know that the expected value in any situation is simply uh, the outcome times its associated probability plus the outcome times its associated probability. Now, theoretically, it continues and you could have more and more, but 99% of the ones that I've seen are just two outcome situations like this one is. So if we read this question, you have one when you go to your number 10 similar to this, but maybe not exactly the same. So a college foundation raises funds by selling 600 raffle tickets for a new car worth $41,000 at $150 each. Find the expected net winnings of a person buying one of the lottery tickets, or sorry, not lottery tickets, um, one of the fundraising tickets. Perfect. So let's talk about what can happen when that per person buys a ticket. They can either win or they could lose. Now, if they win, they're going to win a new car worth $41,000. But if I put $41,000 in here, I'm going to miss the problem because what needs to be here is profit. And so this person made an initial investment. They spent $150. So what should be up here is not 41000 but 41000 minus the $150 they paid in order to get a ticket. And so when you look at 41000 minus 150 you get the number 40850 That would be their net profit. Now go ahead and erase that, knowing you can back up the video just for clarity, but that's where that number comes from. If they lose, they walk away with no car and they're out $150. So that negative sign is very important. That lets us know that we the person ended up losing money. That's a majority of people, right? Only one person is going to win the car and they're selling 600 tickets. So 599 people are going to be like, darn, I'm at 150 bucks. One lucky person is going to be like, great, I, made, I got this $41,000 car. So from a profit perspective, I've made a lot. Okay. And so let's talk about the probability. Now, if you search the, search the wording for the word probability, you're not going to see it because you know the probability because of our work earlier. The probability, let me get rid of this formula up here so we have a little bit more space. So remember what this first column is. If you watched my previous videos, they should be that way. This is the outcome x. This is the associated probability. Now, how many lottery, I keep calling lottery, how many raffle tickets were sold? 600. There's a one out of 600 chance of winning that prize. And there's a 599 out of 600 probability that you're going to lose and walk away with no car and nothing. So what do we have left to do? Run the formula. The formula is simple. The outcome times its associated probability plus the outcome, which in this case is negative 150, times its associated probability. And then we simply just run that in our calculator. We take our, and I'll just say it out loud as I type it in, we take our 4850, multiply by 1, divide by 600. Add to that negative 150, multiply by 599, divided by 600. And we hit equals, and a number comes out. And that number is our expected value and is going to be the answer for part A. And that comes out, you know, my calculator it looks like this, negative 81.6 repeating, right? Eventually, they just put a 7. Now, the answer is going to have us round to um, the hundreds place, to two decimals. And so we would type in negative $81.67. And it will tell us, hey, you're correct. Negative $81.67. Awesome. Now, find the next two questions are actually pretty easy. Find the total profit for the foundation. So this is the answer for A. You run that formula. 
B and C are really nice. So I'm going to scoot this down so we can still see B. B says, find the total profit for the foundation, assuming they had purchased the car. Well, they're selling uh, 600 raffle tickets at $150 each. But they got to pay for the car, so we're going to take away 41000 out of that, because that's what the car costs, if you remember. So they're selling 600 tickets at $150 each. They're going to pull in that much money. So 600 times 150, and we're going to subtract away 41000 They're pulling in um, $49,000 in profit if they had to pay for the car. So 600 times 150 minus the 41,000. Now, C, is, to me they're asked out of order. C says, find the profit for the foundation assuming the car was donated. If the car was donated, they no, need, no longer need to do the subtraction. The profit will be the money that they received strictly from ticket sales, which is 600 times 150. And we get a $90,000 profit. So if they can get, you know, Ford Motor Company or somebody else to donate the car, Ford can write it off on taxes, right, as a charitable contribution. Um, they get their name out there that they're a nice car company and the charitable organization gets to make a whole lot more money and they they get to clear $90,000 out of that. If they had to pay for the car, they would still make a $49,000 profit in something like this where they're giving away what it seems to be a fairly nice automobile valued at $40,800, I'm sorry, $41,000. So expected value, uh, make sure you have the profit and the loss that's in there. Make sure you have the right probabilities. Those are... Um, either going to be given to you like they like they were in some problems earlier in the section or you'll just have to figure them out based upon the setting right so here we knew that there was a one in 600 chance of even winning this thing or 599 out of 600 chance of losing it so if you have questions or concerns reach out via email or better yet come by those zoom sessions all right bye